Hi right there guys, you joined me in a Polestar 2. Polestar Am I getting two. it right with the owner and a friend? Let's let's go for a drive. I'll show you some pictures as I walk around. I'm really interested to see what this is like. I've driven it a little bit. Yeah. It's super silent. How have you found your ownership, Mike, over the last... How long have you had it now? Since, Since November. So it's been... Oh God, uh, about 10 months. 10 months, so you can, oh, oh you yeah, got the so regen right got, got the regen braking. Um, <laughs> can you switch that off? Yeah, we can switch that off. So if you go here, off, done. So it becomes a normal car again. Yeah. I'm gonna straight away show this car's party piece because this is basically the dual motor, super, super duper, crazy quick. Yeah, it's fast. <laughs> Ownership's been great. Like, I, I love the car, I really do. Um, everything about it has been, um, it's different to a petrol car. Yeah. Um, so I've really enjoyed driving it, um, although I haven't driven it <laughs> a lot. But well, yeah, because um, of, of work a bit. But let's just see how quick this thing yeah. is. I mean, flipping egg. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. That's the best way to describe it. And we're what three up. Yep. Um, we had like when um, when I had my Focus RS, this just felt quicker to be honest with you. Uh, it, it's just so fast. So like 400 equivalent brake horsepower, isn't it? Something like that. Crazy but traction. Torque is fully on. The acceleration is the one that really <laughs> hits you. Like if you put your foot in, it's just like at any point as well. Um, yeah, I've got to say I've settled in quite quick. I feel I feel quite like I like the light. I'm looking at the camera. What people can see, it's really like airy. It's a big car. Isn't it? it is a big car. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I wrestled a lot with the idea of going for single motor and oh, yeah. less packs to it. Um, Is there a big difference in price from single to dual? I think so. Um, like, at least back quite, then it was, but yeah, yeah. pricing has changed now. Um, at least quite a few thousand or something like yes, that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but I kind of like, I wanted to, um, uh, if I'm going to, if I was going to buy this, I was going to do it properly. Yeah, do go for the full works. Yeah. Because yeah, you get the pull. And I'm, I'm guessing does the single motor not have four wheel drive? Or no, it's front wheel drive, yeah, I so believe. Um, and I test drove both. I I first did the dual motor with performance pack. Um, <laughs> I'm and, just uh, having loads of fun. <laughs> I don't know how the speed is going to come up, but it's it's fast. It's, it's, it's like that. Speed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the trouble with the single motor is like you just I didn't feel like I was connecting with the car as much. Um, oh, okay. Going through the corners and stuff. Um, and ultimately for I think it was another maybe six, seven thousand, I don't know. Um, I decided to go for dual motor. I think you made the right choice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely much more fun. Um, oh yeah, it's really quick. I'm liking it. I mean I know it's not this car isn't designed for like twisty roads, but we've got nice roads here and I'm getting used to the whole electric thing, but you were sim similar to me in terms of like some of the cars you like, and I know you said like Audi T, you had an Audi TT before. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, it's not really a car that you can massively compare it to, but yeah, how are you finding it in terms of like the differences from having a petrol car of that? So. Uh, firstly, obviously the size, I think like, big. is much <laughs> bigger than my TT, obviously. <laughs> like TT's a very small car. Um, it does feel heavy to me behind mm. the wheel. It's definitely like it gets up to speed crazy quick, but then you're suddenly realizing you're like you're in a great it's, car. It's a very very heavy car, I believe. <laughs> yeah. um, um, but obviously the biggest difference is how you operate it, yeah. how you fill it, or charge it. Um, well, we've spoken loads today, haven't we? In terms of just, it's a lot to get used to. A lot of the the charging stuff is. Yeah, has sometimes had its issues, and you've, I mean, I'll put it on screen because we already showed it's got some software update yeah. bits, and you're taking it to the dealer this next week. It's going heard. in on Tuesday, so um, I, I'm by no means I'm trying to put the car down. Overall, it's it's an amazing car, but yeah. uh, the the short story is um, I did a car update, OTA update. Um, yeah. Hadn't driven it, came back and tried to charge it on one of the fast chargers. Yeah, yeah. And it just errors out, and I can't do a fast charge on it. So um, I just have to go and take it back to the dealer. I did look on forums, yeah, and yeah. everyone's like, they, ultimately, they're about to take it back to the dealer. So that's annoying. Yeah, because yeah. these are really popular. I do see these on the road. So at least you've got the forums to check on bits, but yeah. you, you're still, your hands are tied. And um, yeah, for people who don't know, so like, oh, 
OTAs over the air, so updates, which is basically really convenient. Yeah. But it's not doing the job basically. Yeah. You, you need some sort of hard, I don't know, hard reset. I mean, I mean the jury's still out, so I don't know whether it's actually the OTA that broken it. But yeah, from a, a driver or user perspective, that's the only thing that's changed. Yeah. You know, before then, I managed to actually use a fast charger to last charge it before yeah. the update. So. Um, at least that's that's an indication from a user perspective. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, Polestar or Volvo uh, want to take it down. They might come up with a different excuse. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing. At least you. Um, and obviously, with I'm getting the whole sort of Volvo sense. It's in the Swedish sense. It's mm. built so well, man. And and this car's is it 20, 20 inch wheels or twenty one inch wheels? Uh, it's twenty, I think. It feels really comfortable. For, for me, I'm like gliding along here. I mean, I'm probably used to hot hatches and stuff, but it super just like, and then you could just do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there you go, that's 60. So you're talking 60 in four-ish? One and a half, I think, by on paper, I think. In reality, it feels, and the mid, like at any speed, if, like if you're on the motorway or cruising, I'm guessing you're just like, to be honest with you, you're there. because the car, like I said, the ride is so nice, it's quiet, it's comfy, yeah. and it's fast when it wants to be. I've driven a motorway quite a lot, and yeah. to be honest, I just find myself cruising. <laughs> like when I was in my it does TT, feel like a cruising kind of car. Yeah, it's like I was always car. like just trying to maybe not fire with people, but you know, you're trying to pick up some speed. But with yeah. this one, because you know you got the access to speed whenever you want it, no gears, is it? It's no. like, and there's another one. There you go. <laughs> Polestar it is. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's just, you just no need for it. You just don't realise how fast 30 miles an hour is when you're just driving along in a petrol car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with this, because you get up to 30 miles an hour so quick, you don't, your yeah. eyes don't haven't adjusted. It's <laughs> unlike the petrol car where you've got the build up to it. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The and the noise and, and the, the noise. changing gears or, or whatever it is. And before I know it, I'm doing like 30 miles an hour and I'm like, Wow. Yeah, I, I've I've noticed that too in in the whole electric thing. You you don't you don't realise you're going as fast as you actually are. Yeah. It's got that because it's just so silent. It's so refined. Nothing's like. I mean, it just feels just like super easy cruising. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And suddenly you you're just off in like in the second. So yeah, I guess keeping the speed down is probably the, the, the is. hard thing. It's the do. smallest of twitch, and you're already like five miles over. And yeah. It's yeah. Like, wow. Okay. Let's, um, let's take a spin back from here. Um, yeah, and this actually gives a good chance because it's a big car. The turning um, angle is there. <laughs> is, it, is it quite hard on the turning circle, would you say? It's not as bad as it looks or people make it out. I've read a lot of things about it, but it's definitely not the easiest because of the size. Um, and it's actually quite, it's wider than people think it is, or a little bit wider it, it, than. I don't know how they all do it. They make them look smaller than they are. I think it's just the design language they have with all electric cars now. Yeah, so I think a lot, one of the things they did to help to make it a bit slimmer is the, the side mirrors are um, oh, yeah, yeah. frameless. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then when it's parked, um, they can, obviously they turn in like most cars do now, yeah, modern yeah. cars do nowadays. Um, so it, it does shrink a little bit. It does shrink, It's yeah. definitely wide and like following it in, in my Golf, I was like, this it's a big car. But then it's it's got a lot of space and a lot of quality yeah. as well. I feel super comfy, man. This is this is the life, you can just fall asleep. And I guess the autonomous nature, do you just, can you, are you able to just almost leave it in, do everything practically. mode? Practically, <laughs> yeah, practically. So I've got <laughs> as the- As law allows, basically. Yeah, yeah, I've got the pilot pack onto oh, yeah, this yeah. car and that gives the adaptive cruise control, um, lane assist and etc. And technically, if you're on a somewhere like motorway, it's your carriageway. Yeah. You could stick it on 70 miles an hour on uh, cruise control and then put lane assist on. And yeah. basically, it'll control the distance from this car to the car in front. Right, okay. So and keep it in lane. So I can take my feet off and have my hand sort of kind of finger <laughs> on a steering wheel to get oh it's, yeah to make sure that it's is it like a sensor if you're not holding on to it they, yeah, yeah there is yeah <laughs> it goes crazy it's like you know grab the wheel yeah make sure you're not gonna crash and stuff i love like the nav built in similar to like your audi tt in some ways yep. but with just so much more I, ipad style tech the only thing i say about the ipad tech is i don't like it especially okay. when you're trying to switch on the uh, climate controls and stuff 
like too touchy or no or like you have to focus on where you're pressing like you can't feel it on the dashboard so, so, my, so on the move is it harder than, very much yeah, yeah yeah so on the tt like i because i know where the buttons are i got used to it over six years that I'm yeah, yeah yeah i don't look i just have hand on the wheel and just feel the buttons That's the thing. but on this one you have to make sure you press the climate off not the seat, heat seating button like i just done you're now. taking your eyes off the road absolutely right. so there is that uh, thing and i me i mean it looks nice and it fits in with the tech mm -hmm. but i think it would be also good to maybe have a button like in this little dashboard area um, yeah and i think a lot of manufacturers are thinking of changing it back i know with um, volkswagen for example i know they're going away from their touch screeny stuff they used to have they had um touch sensitive buttons right. but with no haptic feel and in the new generation they put the buttons back so i think a lot of manufacturers and whether or not Polestar kind of do the same to make things easier maybe because and if you want to get the temperature changed and you're doing 70 miles an hour it does it does take a lot it off. does yeah absolutely um hey. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry it's just like the most hilarious thing ever nothing can keep i'm sorry nothing can keep up with this it's so so quick on the road I mean, I it's scared fun. myself. If it scares the driver, it's scaring the passenger. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be <laughs> well, fast. But because it's 100%, it's all the torque yeah. and four-wheel drive, yeah. I'd definitely say if you're going to go for this, this is a Polestar 2, isn't it? I've yeah, got the name Polestar right. 2, yeah. I would go all-wheel drive and I would go dual motor. Because yes. I'm guessing you get a little bit more range as well on top of the A little bit, yeah. Obviously, your range is on um, as they seem. But to be fair, what, what are you sort of getting generally? So I did charge it up to 100% once. Okay. Um, I generally only do up to 80. Um, okay. A, oh, okay. because it's the manufacturer's recommendation to uh, keep the battery um, they say that for healthiest. phones and all stuff don't they do they? yeah, yeah. Um, but I did do 100 and I actually did one long drive um, <laughs> and uh, that was I got about 260 265 mostly on motorway okay um, so obviously there's that factor to consider if you fancy food uh, after we can go there <laughs> oh, is after that the our drive place? yeah oh, okay. we'll, we'll see we'll see yeah yeah no you so yeah you get about 260 realistic range in my opinion um town drive with town driving i'd probably put it down to about 220 230. okay um, so it's sort of like in that cusp where ideally you'd like 300 if mm. you were but then again we were saying like if you're doing long drives you stop off you in do. general yeah um yeah there's and you can do a fast charge while you get coffee and some to eat it's literally no different um I, I felt from my motorway long long distance yeah. journey anyway um, and I don't feel like I'm missing out too much on in comparison to owning a petrol car yeah yeah except for that obviously you put the pump in you fill it up <laughs> in two minutes or whatever and then you're out um, the speed is um, definitely the, the thing when, when you're in a rush and oh. there's there's so much and again as we were kind of speaking you're you're still not 100 percent sold on whether or not like this is now you for life in electric yeah um your sort of would be i think um i think everyone knows like infrastructure is one of the main issues for electric cars yeah. and um just yesterday the government said they're pushing the plan back to 2035, 2035 which really annoyed so, me that because i just i hate when you say one thing oh it's de a deadline is here and then you just make make up them yeah i think for electrical owners the frustration is that having the, ele the electrical car in itself is um i was waiting for you to put the foot <laughs> you, in there <laughs> it's got no head nothing to do with the national speed of it aside <laughs> <laughs> um like it's nothing nothing wrong with owning an electric car it feels great it drives great like keep driving it yeah, now yeah it's just it feels really we good want, actually really good yeah better public infrastructure would make the whole experience 10 times better yeah um and I don't mean just installing seven kilowatts, 22 kilowatt chargers. I mean 50 to 150 kilowatts. So, right. so that will give you a possible charging in like 20 minutes, 20 minutes half an hour and to you get, get a, a full amount. Yeah, full tank. Um, and that's generally when people do stop off a rest stops, that's what you need. Yeah. So th those small little seven kilowatt stuff, it's just not really enough, is no. it? I mean, it takes like over 12 hours to give it a good meaningful charge. And that's just not what we're looking for. I'm really it. liking this car in the turns, man. It turns well. It's it really good. Well. I mean, it's, it's um, certainly, I mean, I remember driving your Audi TT. It's actually on the channel as well. Um, the steering isn't as more like direct as that. Yeah. And you 
you don't get as much feel. This steering feels really light. I don't know, again, if you notice that coming from your Audi. So, but, it, but it does, it, hey, it turns and it, it, get, it gets around. Yeah, so the steering, weirdly enough, the dual motor is obviously heavier because it's got bigger battery and stuff. So you'd lose, oh. but the steering feels lighter comparison to, at least when you're going around the corners in comparison to single motor <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> it's so fucking well, we're it, behind a golf gti and you just wouldn't even know which way this car's gone and this is like it's so much fun honestly i like even as a i know i'm the owner feels, but yeah you know, as a passenger true. driver like just feeling it is just incredibly it's fun awesome um, no, I really, I love it. This is definitely the quickest electric car I've driven. I've driven a, quite a few. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, I think uh, the, br the brakes feel really good. Feel like I can really. Uh, that was the one thing I didn't know. Yeah. I feel really confident in what it's doing. Like, I can definitely. I feel more confident pushing this through some corners than I do in some of the cars that I've driven, yeah. which are well, you, technically sporty. Yeah, well, your TT was the front-wheel drive yeah. version, wasn't it? it Whereas was. this, you know, you've got the you've got the traction. And in some ways, I think the heaviness of the car keeps it kind of planted on the road as well. Yeah, it um, made it, I, I'm more refined yeah. as a result. My TT obviously being it light and stuff, like even if it was Quattro version, like, I would still, still feel like the light, car would, yeah. like, if it went up a hill, it would fly off a hill rather than, <laughs> you know, whereas this one is heavier, I do feel like it just kind of sits on the road quite nicely. It's got a good start. Well, yeah, it's a really, really nice start. I really like it from the side. I, I, well, actually, to be fair, all kind of angles of it look pretty cool. Mm. It's got, like, the shallow windows. Yeah. I mean, I know the roads that we just on, it's not like a typical, what maybe a traditional bar of this would use it for. Yeah. But for just chilling just doing nothing even if you didn't want to drive enthusiastically yeah. this is like an amazing car and well I, I'm, I think it's the whole like the Swedish quality a lot of it like in here it feels like to me anyway like art deco -y, very classy yeah <laughs> I think there are definitely different configurations you can do to make it look more art deco -y. yeah yeah I just wanted something nice and clean it's something I loved about I love about Audi is that their dashboards and seats and everything are just crisp and clean. Yeah. Um, it's important that the car looks nice on the outside, yeah. but for me, I spend most of my time on the inside, so when I sit in the car, I want to feel like, yeah, I can sit here for hours. Yeah. You know, whereas... Oh, man, I, I could sit here for hours. Like, if we were on a road trip or something, you could easily do, well, the range that it wants before stopping. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't have a problem. I love the light from that. That I think that's the biggest thing. So I think this was from a plus pack. Okay. Um, that you get the you got the pole star light coming through the thingy. Um, hey. <laughs> and that's not even that was like 50% throttle when it's flying. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the panoramic roof. And I think to be honest, this is also for me is a pretty much a must because yeah, yeah. the single motor that I drove didn't have it and it just felt so dark in here. Yeah, um, yeah. And if you go for a dark interior. It just feels a little bit too dark. You're like swallowed yep. up in this uh, green. black hole. So, um, yeah, it's expensive, but I feel like compared to Audi and BMW and Merc, where you have to pay for all kinds of different packs mm -hmm. to bring it up to the top level, um, the value is quite good. I think overall for the both packs, when I bought it, it was like £3,000. Okay. And you got all the extra additional stuff. And the thing is, I think for residuals and if for someone looking to buy this car on the second hand market, mm. I would look through a car with a pan roof and the dual motor, to be honest. I think those are the two things. Yeah. Just from me being in here. And um, yeah. Like, yeah, like I said, like sitting in here just makes it feel a lot better. Yeah, a lot more. So nice. But what was um, the colour an option? Because that's because it's metallic, isn't it? It's a really it's like a snowy <laughs> Yeah, it's like a I'll, I kind of describe it as like really, really light grey slash off-white kind okay. of the colour. Um yeah, that's probably so it's called magnesium on this on this particular model and when I was originally looking to buy it, buy it, it came a standard colour in black and, and I wasn't sure on the magnesium, I wanted to go white. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I drove in the white performance pack model, um, oh, yeah, yeah. motor and uh, it looked nice and stuff and then some time passed and Polestar changed the standard wheels that they gave uh, as well as standard colour, which is a, if you want to pay for a different colour it's like £1,500. So that's wow, another quite yeah, a bit of cost. That is quite a bit. Yeah. And then they said the the default colour is like magnesium, and I'm like, oh no, I either wanted white or black. Yeah.
but then I went to do a second uh, test drive to do single motor and I saw the magnesium there and I'm like, now I'm sold. Because it was a sunny day in well, and we, a sunny day. Just, up, right? Luckily, I've just got a little bit on camera when the sun was on it, it looks really, really good. Yeah, I know, and it's I've, kind of gone overcast now. So if you look at it now, it'd be more like grey. Yeah. So, and you know, the sort of like off white grey colour is just perfect for what I want and need. So, I, I mean, you know me from my Golf R, I, I think. I mean, to be fair, grey or black, you can't go wrong. A, for resale. B, for you don't want such a shouty, Larry out there car to, you know, everyone's kind of staring at it every five seconds. Yeah. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. I'm guessing pulling out of junctions, roundabouts, you haven't really got it. You don't, you don't really need to worry about these things, <laughs> speed-wise. <laughs> I think the only danger is you get quite daring. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you know what? I thought that just then. I was like, I reckon I can be up yeah, that guy. you do get quite daring. <laughs> on it you're like they're close but you know you can pull away pretty quick okay. whether that's good, good or bad I don't know but um and, and I love um the love the traction I mean a big four wheel drive pan it rains all the time in the UK mm. you, you've got it's, it's, it's a no it's a no brain I I mean not that I've, I haven't driven the single motor or the front wheel drive or a non pan roof car yeah um but I this this configuration feels like it suits this kind of car. I, I genuinely it's like, like a classy business kind of yeah, car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of different to the it's TT not, feel. Yeah, but it's not like um like a BMW 3 series or 5 series or whatever. This mm. feels like a little bit special to me. Yeah, <laughs> I think um not just as an owner obviously with the this specific configuration yeah. but I do feel like if you're going to get a pole star if you're on a budget by all means go dual motor and put in the packs and I think you'll, you'll definitely enjoy the same thing that you just mentioned yeah, just yeah. probably minus the speed yeah um, but we love the speed but we love the speed exactly <laughs> and it's one of the biggest plus points that in my opinion it's worth the extra I don't know I, I, now, I, 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 I you know. freaking think it's really really well I mean it's starting to rain now because that's just what happens this is UK things and yeah this is really nice and the first time I drove it because you you let, let me drive it about the first day you picked the it day up I picked it, it up really really yeah. early and we had a little a bit of a blast but having more time spent in it freaking hell every, every time this this happens I, I notice the difference in the step up from say like your hatch mm -hmm. like I drove I know this isn't exactly the same but I drove um, a subscriber's M3 up in Wales the new M3 and you just notice that level manufacturers go to, yeah. And this feels like that. This is so much different than the hatches I drive. <laughs> yeah, I think test drive is definitely a must. Oh, um, and it's so like I think people. It's very easy on the eye, and you know if, if you like gadgets and gimmicks and stuff, yeah. like you would definitely be like, yeah, okay, why not? Let's give it a go, kind of thing. Yeah, it's a very tech, I mean, we um, we all work in tech, don't we? So we, we, we're, we're used to this kind of stuff. It is quite fun. Yeah. I mean, endless playing, really. Yeah. Um, but I think definitely do a test drive for any potential owners because yeah. you don't you just don't know how it feels until you drive it. Yeah. And do drive both dual and single motor because... Do, do you go to a Volvo dealership for that or is there Polestar No, there's stuff? a Polestar, like... Um, uh, they don't have a dealer, but they have their own kind of yeah, uh, centre. Yeah, because you were saying like you you got this like delivered to you. It was sort of one of those ones. It wasn't like you go to collect it or could no. You, yeah. So you purchase it all online. It's almost like it's the same as practically Tesla. Yeah, because yeah. like, online shopping, you order it, pay a deposit, um, and then they give you a delivery date whenever it arrives in the yeah. UK. Um, and you pick this. Yeah, you and they this. drive it down to mine. And the the poor fella, he he drove it down to mine from I think wherever he lived. I think he's in Warwickshire or something. Okay. Um, and I'm to be honest, I wasn't quite pleased with it at the time. Like I didn't want someone else driving my yeah, car before you, bought, I drove you, my car. You bought a brand new car. Yeah, and, and he's already had like 60, 70 miles on it. Yeah. Um, uh, to be fair, that, that is that is right. Compared to when I picked up my TT, I had like. <laughs> 10 less than 10 miles on it you know it's a I little do bit. miss your TT I know you said you yeah. might miss it as well but <laughs> and they just deliver it and the poor guy he just he didn't have a way of getting back apart from taking the train <laughs> but back to his place yeah, and yeah, I'm like yeah, yeah. Listen, I can I can at least drive you back to your uh, oh, to the train station. Nice. Oh, so you got a little bit of a feel with him there. Yeah. You? So they do go through the the whole you know everything around the car and how to operate it. But 
Um, I'll be honest, I was trying to, you know, um, bless him, like trying to get rid of him because yeah. I just wanted to, <laughs> wanted to start driving. I'm like, yeah, I get it, mate. I can drive a car. And, but and I, I, get, I think that's the one thing as well. You're pretty tech heavy. You know your stuff. Mm. For a normal person stepping in this, do you think they're going to understand all the tech, or do you reckon no. they're just going to get e- in and hope? Even for me, at times, we. <laughs> Um, I kind of wished I asked more questions. Okay, so okay. Um, I yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I asked more questions. I really do. Um, but I guess you got. But the it's for, okay. You, the forums. Yes, you absolutely. Can... There's a Polestar forum which is really informative, really okay. nice community of people. I mean, I haven't really got myself involved apart from searching for issues or whatever. I'll stick that in the description actually, because I think that's, again, being a bit of an ownership review, Yeah, that's what you've got to do. Similar to what I do with the golf stuff, there's always forums, whether it's Facebook forums or websites, um, particularly in something that's so new and fresh. Mm. And even in a year or two, who knows how much they're going to change this car, because this is a late 2022 car, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is, yeah. So still pretty bang on new but you don't know what manufacturers are doing these I mean they've already changing. changed the front part so I've got a black grill yeah uh, I'm sure you've got yeah 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 it's on the but now it's all white so they've got ah. slightly different sensors and stuff now I don't know if it gives extra tech but I don't like the look of it personally yeah like yeah. the the black grill at like the front kind of still gives it the not a petrol car vibe but a car vibe not just this electric yeah I know, you know I know what you mean phone on the Rose kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I kind of like that. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons I didn't go for Tesla, um, the yeah. three model. Um, yeah. Because it just, I, yeah. I get it. Aerodynamically, they made it the best possible. That's why you get a lot of range, a lot of speed, mm-hmm. and you know, ha- ha- hats off to them. You know, well, as they, a they, owner. Yeah, yeah. It's good engineering, but at the same, but for me, what's more important is if I'm making a move from petrol car to electric car. I still want it to feel like a car. I want the dashboard. I want the yeah, navigation maps. Yeah, that's a good maps. point, actually. Um, I still get the iPad that they get. Um, I still get a lot of text that they get. But I maintain that it's a car feel. I step in there and I'm like, or I sit in there rather, sorry. Yeah. And I feel like I'm sitting in a car, not just a, a driving iPad. That's a really good point, um, actually. Because I mean, one thing I've heard from Tesla is build quality isn't their strong point. They've got ridic- They've got the ba- battery tech nailed because they've yeah. just been doing it. But this feels more classy, refined, like I'm sitting into a car. Mm. It, yeah, yeah, it does. Oh, it just has that like car it. feel, which I was looking and for. And I, I love like the stalks, everything. It feels, well, it feels worth the money. To be honest with you, it feels like that premium quality car. And yeah, I mean, I know you're still <laughs> like, two thousand four hundred miles. Yeah, it's, no, it's uh, I, I don't drive it enough. <laughs> but it's nice knowing that I have it, kind of thing. Yeah. Like, kind of, it's. Uh, to it? try it so would you so would you reckon yeah would you recommend it basically would you recommend it to people watching if you're looking for an electrical vehicle absolutely yeah yeah i, I really do i think now you've got more options see, which is fine yeah around. go for it yeah and then just put it on uh, number one and see that's the see i'm getting used to it now when you're taking your eyes off the road yeah to make and it's changes. edgy because you're kind of like yeah, yeah get back into it but as far as electrical vehicle goes absolutely i'd recommend it um I mean, there, there are other good models out there, to be fair. But and I guess I'm being biased from a but, but po- Polestar are in a good little, a good are. little place, and yeah. I, I can go from my experience on um, Volkswagen stuff. Yeah, I'm like, this is a this is quite a bit of a step up. It feels really. I mean, yeah, and price wise, they're not too dissimilar of equivalent. Um, VW bits as well. You can park in there, maybe. Yeah, I was, I was going to see, see if the minis. Oh, yeah, I can use them there. Um, yeah, but I think if you're looking for if you're looking for EV as a cost saving thing, mm-hmm. I, it's not a cost saving thing in my opinion. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, we were saying the car is expensive. Um, in terms of like how much miles you get um, for how much you use to charge or whatever, like it's marginal savings. It's cheaper in my opinion, but it's marginal. So. Um, yeah, the treat it as a you're just owning another car, not just you know. Um, oh, that's cool. I'll pop that on uh, on camera to show the, the the crew what it's all like to park. So I think that's also part of the pilot pack. I believe. Right. So you get all the yeah. all the tech, but like I think the pilot pack was something like a 
1500 or something if you were to pay for the equivalent tech pack on Audi it's like 3000 I think pounds. if you're gonna do it do it I don't see why you wouldn't go for this kind of spec that you've gone for you spent already spending that much money, right? Yeah. So fuck it. You 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 you're, hot, you're so you're so much in and committed to kind of the car. Yeah. I'll leave it here for a second. Yeah. Um, so if you just push your one down, and you're in uh, neutral. Oh yeah, you're already in neutral. Yeah, you got it. And, and then press and park. Yeah. Then that's it. And that's it. Take your foot off, and then you just walk off. Well, that that's the thing. When I was um, at VW a lot, you just put your foot on the brake and you go. There's literally. And even though you could be like really technical to understand everything, you don't necessarily have to. You can just have this as a car. Yeah. To just. I mean, it is a car. It's a good family car. Um, and quite frankly, I think something like this. And I know the range is not 300 miles, but if you are. Does it actually say it should do 300? I think they claim something like 300 or something. Well, but but you, you would say. When no. I went to the centre and I asked them about the mileage, they were pretty honest to say, "Listen, you got to take off about 20% off what we claim it to be," because. You know, when they test it, it's probably without aircon on, without and doing a constant speed. And Not doing away. probably what we just did. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it does go down quick, but I do feel like if you treated the a petrol car like my TT the same way as you just treat it now, the amount that it goes down in, in terms of percentage and battery and mar range miles, it wouldn't be any different. Yeah, yeah. So you literally, I do feel like you literally are just switching out from a petrol car to an electric car. Um, and yeah, the ownership should be the same. You wouldn't feel different, except for the fact that you can have a bit more fun, in my oh, opinion. Well, yeah, this is actually, I would probably say it, I wouldn't get tired of that acceleration. Yeah. It's one of those things where I don't think it's a one trick pony because it feels like it felt quite fun to actually just drive and to have a have a good a good like chuck around with it. Seats feel really, really nice. I quite like the cloth stuff. I'm guessing you can probably go full leather. You can, you, you can, can go, go full every... leather. Um, and for those who are green conscious, um, yeah, I think green. a lot of these materials are all recycled. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like, yeah. The only thing I'll say is, so these materials here, they yeah. mark quite easily. You, they, they easily wipe off. So it's not like they're permanent, but like here, if I had a bag on, like it just, you get mark and, some people might might annoy them, but you've got you know, a bit of okay. space. I guess the the um, the one thing I liked about electric was the fact that you some of them like um, I've been in the Ionic Five for yeah. Hyundai. They don't have, have anything here, um, so I don't know why they've. I mean, it looks cool. So going back to it being a car feel, like, that is what it's that trying is kind to of do. what it like. That's what I liked yeah. about it at the time, and it probably doesn't need to be as big. Um, and also, you can't see in the camera, but the tunnel goes right between these seats here. Okay. And from what I read, it's got nothing underneath it. So it makes the seating much more uncomfortable at the back if you've got five. Oh, yeah. Right? If it, for four, like one on each seat is fine. If you've got but, middle passenger. But why fine. have this is something I don't understand. Yeah, um, if it serves no function, um, what is it doing? What is it doing? Well, uh, why would you put it I there? like you got, I mean, it doesn't matter how big phones get, you're going to be able to fit a phone in there. <laughs> yeah, so it's got the, it's got the charging thing there. Um, the only thing I don't like is when you charge a phone that it heats up and this plastic thing gets very bubbly. So, uh, to be honest, my phone's always pretty much charged, so I don't really need to do it, so I'll just put it here. Oh, you pop it on the side, that, but and that would automatically charge if you did accidentally switch yeah. it over. And then you've got USB-C ports there. Uh, um, I'm not cup sure. holder, <laughs> wallet keys, extra cup holder. You actually charge your fob, so I'll just show it on your camera. So you got this, and uh, yeah. you don't change the battery ever. Ever. <laughs> you charge it by putting it in here. It's got the battery key charging thing there. Oh, cool! So when you're driving, you leave it there, and then it just charges as you're driving. And, and will it tell you if it's getting low? And then, I or, have no it's idea. It's never happened. It's never happened. I think it's fairly low battery using and then they said and that actually that's actually really nice to easily fit in your pocket as well scratches Just easily though uh, so you can get covers um oh yeah like but to be honest with you like i think and you don't even need to use it to unlock the freaking car either. No. It's, it's just going to do everything. If you have your key on you, you can unlock it by your phone. You can unlock it just by touching the handle. If you've shown me the app the before, car. it's like it. Li and and I guess that's the thing when again, if you want to go down that route, you've got to be sort of tech savvy, really. To A bit, have this. yeah. But I would say like if anyone's not tech savvy and they bought the car, just whoever delivers a car. Just grab a hold of them, keep them ransom. Yeah, um, get, get, get and, them to tell you. Know, you. Don't let them go until you're comfortable. And I think to be fair, they are very good and patient. Yeah. It's just, for me, I was just like, listen, mate, I love it, it's here. I want to drive I want to enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I want to go. Um, just... 
so I send the I send the guy back a bit too quick <laughs> um, right. to, to get up to speed. But yeah, no, every, everything feels good on my side. I, I I genuinely enjoyed the drive as well, and I, I'm slowly coming more into the, ironically as they push back the date for electric i start to see more value in it now than i probably did years before um a from a driving perspective because i had plenty of fun yeah. <laughs> and um b like from a proper ownership proposition as well like I, I still feel like being able to charge from home or i mean if you've got it mapped out so you know like a charger near you yeah those are quite important um yeah i mean it's probably important to you know point out whoever's watching um i live in a flat and i yeah. have my own charger but i've got a i used i've got a tesco two minute walk down the road and i so charge it there it out yeah to, so to have that that's one of the decision making process but you're right you need to have a home charger to make sure it's always topped up to 80 90 100 however you like it um so that's something to consider but i wouldn't say it's impossible to have an electric car if you live in a flat as long as like you say you just plan it right well yeah you've, you know you've where you can you're charge it, it. That, that's the um, thing and luckily in a small town where i live like we've got quite a lot of chargers um i can leave it charging for a few hours that's the thing because you're home. around sort of like the milton Keynes area by the way that's where kind of we are it's very modern it's like new city so you've got that yeah but if you're into like an old place like to be fair i i, I was in i'm in st albans and even I thought, I was like, there's gonna be loads of charging, it's gonna be fine. There was a few charging points, but I had issues when I had the Fiat 500e of A, queuing quite a while, yeah. and B, just them not working. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because Roman old school, they're still, yeah. they're trying to get it right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think, I think it's quite well known that UK infrastructure in every sense is very old and Victorian, yeah, like, you know. No one's denying it. No, exactly. Always. And. I think I said it back when we were near Whips and yeah, yeah. driving, like the frustration for EV drivers with the 2035 plan going, being pushed yeah. back further is not so much from a being green point of view, but that just means the infrastructure is going to be slower yeah. getting to us. So we are. Yeah, because now, now they're going to be like, oh, we've got more time. Yeah, you've got an extra five years, and <sighs> that's an extra five years of me probably not having any updated. Um, infra electrical charging infrastructure yeah. so and then actually you might be more inclined to head back to petrol potentially so it's something I'm considering so yeah. you know everything you said about the car today I love and it's just I, it, owning is such a privilege but um, the reliance on infrastructure um, and also I think the the benefit of having an electric car isn't as great as I thought it was going to be yeah. um, and therefore, you know, I'd be happy to, at this point anyway, um, you know, give it up and then go back to some uh, older petrol car yeah. for a while before I jump back on it. Um, this is like the experience of yes, seeing what it's exactly. like. Yes, um, exactly. And I, like, it, yeah, I'm very privileged in order to be able to drive this car at the moment. Um, but, because I don't drive it a lot, to be honest, like, yeah, 260 miles is not quite 300, 320 but it suits me. It's the same as what I've got in my TT. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, I, that's no I've difference. kind of like, if you can get the 300, I don't really see how 99% of people can't live with that kind of mm. sort of range, 250 to 300. 200 is still more than enough. And I think you see a lot of smaller electric cars from Vauxhall, Renault, um, Peugeot that, yeah. They have like 150 miles. Yeah, the smaller range, ones are just, you know? they've they got almost like no range. So it's... that's clearly enough. So if you say 260 for this car, then I don't think it's as unreasonable as people make it out to be. Yeah. Because I know people are saying, well, okay, you're paying so much money, you should get 300 over. And I'm like, well, it's a trade off. You know, Teslas, they get 300 plus if you drive it well, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't feel like a car to me. And I could, I could give 40 miles a miss for. How, sitting in a car that I want to sit in, having everything that I want, um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, awesome. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll thoroughly recommend it. And if you've got home charging and stuff, and uh, if you don't drive a lot, it's well, it's for you. But, yeah, definitely. Um, I like cars. I like fast cars. Yeah, exactly. That's um, the thing. So to say that from from you as well is is interesting because that's a, a lot of my audience too but no i think we'll we'll probably end it there even though there's there's a lot a lot to say you can always um, come back and do another, yeah exactly another, well you know, you're, longer review well you're you actually want. you're away from japan and this is actually a little bit of an interesting one how this car's going to be sort of sat for a little bit mm. and how that's going to work as and potentially a benefit over a petrol car you haven't got all the oils you don't need to get stuff all warmed up 
and I guess I guess we'll find out and also see how the your visit goes as well if they can so the the update thing is around what was the actual issue it's just the um way. so basically like uh anything from 50 kilowatt upwards i'll plug it in and then it errors out right so um, you have to do a lower state of charge to yeah, be able to which charge takes it. a bit while and um, but even then that gets interrupted so ah. something's definitely on board that's weird that's happened after the ota update um but funnily enough i just got a notification for another update so <laughs> i don't know if that's going to fix it um, an update or an but update. i'm going to take it in anyway because i've taken a video of it um, yeah and any electrical owners, if you see any issues, just make sure you take pictures, videos, because if, yeah, they might, if you they can't might reproduce appear, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you don't want them to be like, oh, it's not appearing now. And then you have to come make plans to go back to the garage. Like, yeah. you pay a lot of money for these, and these are fairly new tech, so. You expect the quality, you know, this is well under warranty as well. You don't want to be, you know, waste, But waste when petrol time. cars first came out, they had their fair shares of issues. So I don't want to be too critical of yeah. it. And it's only, really one of two issues that I've had um, which hasn't been major luckily the first one uh, it's more to do with the brakes but um, we'll see how this goes and I think the other important aspect of ownership is the servicing mm -hmm. um, how does the garage near you deal with yeah. you and your car every time you have an issue and this is the first time you've taken it into it's the first control. time so um, on the phone they've been great yeah um, and I used to go to Audi and Aylesbury yeah. to service my TT and they were amazing. So I'm hoping for the same experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually whether I keep this car long term or not will also depend on what kind of service Ooh. I get. Because um, if I don't get a good service, then actually owning the car is not enjoyable yeah. as driving it. Because you're always kind of worried about what if it breaks. And yes. if it breaks, you're like, oh my God, come on. Yeah. I've got to deal with whoever it is that you know you're not going to have a great time. And so- Want to know that if the, yeah. net, the network is right. Exactly. Okay. Well, listen, we'll, we'll end it there, but yeah, maybe do another one. Absolutely, in, in the anytime you want, yeah. We'll, we'll go through it, but I think overall, recommend it. I can recommend it as well from, from the drive that I've had. And yeah, if you've got any questions, comment, and um, yeah, we'll be happy to help, but yeah. Cheers guys, like, share, subscribe. See you again next time, Thanks. cheers.